again, it's Chrissy here for part three of consumer awareness as a part of this return and reunion curriculum. So we just finished up talking about predatory lending. We wanna also make sure we understand what the contract terms are if we need to access a loan. You can get those contract terms written down and take them to one of our personal financial counselors to look over and make sure that they are kosher and that they comply also with the Military Lending Act, the MLA. Um, we want to, the MLA will cap interest rates at 36%, which is still really, really, really high. So we want to look at lowering that interest rate as much as possible, okay? Um, and I've mentioned this in another brief, but I want to make sure I reiterate this. Predatory lending is unethical, but it is legal. So sometimes we try and do everything we can to make sure that this is avoided and that it's always stopped, but it is legal. Um, if you do find yourself in financial straits and you do need um, help in a situation that you found yourself in financially, you can come see us. You can also contact Navy Marine Corps Relief Society for a quick assist loan or a uh, bigger loan or grant, as well as in Southern California, you have to be in Southern California to use this, the Support the Enlisted Project, okay, for that in interest-free loan or grant. All right, so let's move forward and talk a little bit about credit management. So one of the interesting questions I've had before is, um, how do I know if I have credit? Um, when do I get credit? Basically, you can get credit after you have a social security number. So even minors and young adults or teenagers have credit. Um, hopefully it's good, but we do find times where adults have used children's credit um, because they have been in a desperate situation. Uh, so if you have had if you've had that as an experience, um, there are ways that you can go through to contest that. Um, can't always be fixed, but it's a good idea to, to do what you can to see if you can um, get that corrected, All right? Knowing your debt to income ratio is really important when understanding your credit. We want that to be 20% um, or less. 20% or less of your monthly income should go to paying down your debts. If you have higher than that, um, it's a little bit of a concern, something you should be aware of. Um, much higher than that, it, you might be at risk for losing your security clearance or having um, financial instability. So consider that, all right? Um, a good credit score, you can look that up. This is a good credit score, okay? Um, the better your credit is, the better you will, the better you have of a chance of lowering your interest rates and the better you are at being able to use your buying power to purchase. Um, so it's good to monitor your credit report um, through those three agencies that I mentioned earlier and checking that annually. If you see any errors, we wanna report that as soon as possible, okay? Be aware of having too much credit. So this is a credit score. Credit would be what I can purchase on credit. So on my credit card, I can purchase up to, let's just say $10,000. I don't make $10,000 in a month, so it's probably maybe not a good idea to do that unless I need that for, um, for something that I, I know that might come my way. So I, I will give you an example. Um, I actually had my credit pretty low when I was mostly working part-time and staying at home because I didn't want someone to have access to my credit card and be able to charge way more than what I could afford to pay down in a month. So I had purposely kept my credit on my cards very low. However, when I went back to work, I was making more and I was spending more. So I was going up to kind of the limit of my credit and not going over, but kind of bumping up against it each month. And I started to know that my credit score was going down incrementally. Not a lot, just little, a few points here and there. Um, and I actually just yelled down the hall to one of my uh, colleagues and was like, what gives? And she reminded me that it's a good idea for me to use about 25% of, of that available credit and that would increase my credit score. Some of the other ways that you can increase your credit score are paying off your credit card in full every month and on time. 
that will help. And then making sure that you do not have a, too many credit cards. So I, I once saw um, one of those people on the like Good Morning America that said, I only have two credit cards and this was someone who knows more about financial wellness than most people will. Um, so having like the big, the book of the many credit cards that you use and this one's a good one and that one you can't use anymore and that's not what we wanna do, okay? Um, we wanna have two and we wanna keep those in good standing all the time. But consider too what kind of credit card would, um, what their point systems are and what works for you. So if you like to travel frequently, by the way, none of us are, okay? <laughs> I have a friend that says that he's losing um, X hundred thousand miles because he can't actually make a trip before they'll expire, which is a bummer. Um, so if you like to travel a lot, maybe a credit card through an airline is a good option. If you, um, you know, want to save up for a vacation, if you're a part of a vacation club, just consider what works for you. Um, sometimes you can get cash back. Sometimes you can get points to purchase things later. Sometimes you can use those for some of the other additional expenses that you might have. So make sure that you establish that credit wisely and um, maybe the best possible way. So sometimes you can purchase things or get a big line of credit to up your credit score, but that might not be financially sound for you or the best financial decision. So consider doing it in the best possible way you can. And then know when to get financial intervention. So sometimes we just don't understand why our credit score has um, dropped or some of the other ways that we can build credit. So uh, reach out to uh, the personal finan financial management team if you have any questions. One of the crazy things about credit is that people that don't like to use credit cards or haven't gone into debt sometimes can have lower um, a lower credit score. So for example, I'm married to an active duty service member. Um, his credit score is higher than mine because he actually has more debt. Um, he pays it down really well each month and he's never had to, to um, have any financial issues. But I haven't ever, I've actually bought large purchases cash. I've never gone into, taken out a loan to purchase something. So it's one of these things if you want to learn more about it, I suggest reaching out to our personal financial management team. All right. Now, let's talk about savings. Now, this is really important with COVID-19 and our current coronavirus pandemic. A lot of us are learning right now that we should have had more in our emergency fund, um, businesses included. So we like to say plan for three months worth of your monthly expenses in an emergency fund, which is different than your reserve fund or your goal getter fund, okay? So make sure if you don't have it yet, plan to go ahead and get it. They, even within the military, which is a pretty regular, you get regularly paid, there are times where allotments get messed up, um, there have been issues in pay, um, and there's situations like what we have currently going on where no one knew that they would close restaurants for an indefinite period of time. Or I regularly had contract work for um, six years and now I don't have any because our clients are unavailable. That's just a for instance circumstance. So your emergency fund is to cover you for those who knows what pandemic um, national crisis situations. Or it could even be something like a disaster, like an earthquake or something. Um, having a reserve fund, that would be for your one-time expenses, like the transmission fell out in my car, or we've had a death in the family, or um, we had to escape California because there was a tsunami in San Diego and we needed to get out of town for a period of time. So consider your reserve fund and how much you might need there. And then your goal getter fund would be more um, geared towards vacations or maybe a home improvement project or saving up for um, a license or school or something like that. Um, think too about maybe some college expenses for children. None of this is fun <laughs> to talk about, um, but consider all of these need to be different. We don't want to have our emergency fund also be tied up with our 
our children's college fund. That's not the ideal situation for smart savings. All right, I'll see you in the next section of this brief. Bye.